Paul from International Scale Modeler. Um, there was a thread on the forum, on International Scale Modeler's forum, regarding um, help with various stages of building aircraft. So, um, like I said to you guys on the forum, um, I've wanted to do a build for a few weeks now. Not necessarily concentrating on the build, but actually the techniques along the way. So, um, I've been out bought Airfixers 148, New Tool 109. Built this kit a few times now. I've chosen it for a reason. It's probably one of the best kits I could recommend to a beginner. It literally falls together, goes together very well, easily. There's no major fit issues at all. It's just a really nice, simple kit to build. Um, so, this is my um, guinea pig as such for this. So, we're not here to see the finished product, although we will, obviously. We're just here to see specific stages on the way. So, I'm hoping to get about 10 parts out of this. We'll cover the cockpit, so spraying, weathering, dry brushing and what have you, the way I do them. Um, then to the fuselage, how it's being joined together, so that'll cover gluing, filling, sanding, uh, rescribing. Uh, we'll move on to masking, uh, camouflage patterns, masking canopies. Um, spraying, we'll cover airbrushing. I'll go through exactly how I airbrush, the way I do it, the techniques I use. Um, on to, where are we then, masking canopies, um, decals, just on and on and on, all through all the different stages. hope you get 10 videos, 15 to 20 minutes long, I'll try and keep them as short as possible because you don't hear me waffling on for ages like I normally do. Um, and we'll see where we can get to with each stage, hope you find it helpful. Um, so, like I said, this is the kit we're using, it's a great kit, it's about £16 in the UK. Absolutely superb, and I'm going to build that yellow nose for a change because I haven't done that one yet. So, what we've got is the main cockpit part. So, we've got the two fuselage halves with the cockpit walls inside. I've built the actual cockpit. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So, I've literally glued all the parts in there the seat, uh, the joystick, joystick control stick, instrument panel, foot pedals, sods law. Because I'm really focusing on the cockpit, I've gone to snap one of the uh, trim adjustment wheels. So there's only one on there, but never mind. Stuff like this happens. Um, it's all been glued together. I'm not going to cover glue and anything today. We'll cover that when we start putting the fuselage halves together. Because um, we'll be here all day otherwise. So let's use a bit of extra thin sanding sticks. Glued it all together, let it dry. I've then gone over and primed it in Vallejo's uh, acrylic grey primer. Again, once we come to putting paint on the actual aircraft, I'll cover priming along with the airbrushing techniques as well. So I just want to keep these parts as simple as possible and just focus on one part of it as we go. So like I said, these have been primed in Vallejo Grey Primer. It's about 24 degrees in here today. It's quite a warm, humid day. Uh, so it's dried really quick. If you're going to sand this at all, I'd say leave it for at least two days because it can start pulling the primer off of the feathering edges if you're trying to sand in. We won't be sanding anything on this, so it's been dry now for about an hour, so I'm happy to spray over it, so not a problem at all. Uh, another first for me, anything that requires an RLM colour, I always, always use extra acrylics. Um, love these paints, never had a problem with them, a lot of people do, but they find the colour matches absolutely superb. Today, we're going to go a different route. We're going to use, so I'm just reaching across to the spray booth, we're going to use Mr Hobby and... All the 109 E's of this era are RLM02. So first, again, I'm just gonna, I'm probably going to spray the entire aircraft in Mr. Hobby. See how it goes down. See what the colour matches like with other ones I've sprayed before. Um, and we'll just see how it goes, basically. So that's what we're going to be using. So what we'll do now, we'll go to the spray booth. Um, we'll airbrush down this base colour. Then we'll pick out some other colour parts, um, which the instrument panels in black. Top of the control levers, black, etc. Um, and then we'll get on to weather and get and what have you. So we'll go to the spray booth and we'll get spraying. Okay, this. so in the spray booth, um, got all our parts ready to go. We've got our paint, so I said Mr. Hobby our Olive 2. Um, give it a good shake. I like to tap on part of my hands, give them a good mix. I haven't even looked at these in the RLM colours yet. But they're anything like the others, that's absolutely superb. So there we go. Airbrush today. Um, for Mr. Hobbies is one of my hardest steam back evolutions. 0.2mm needle. Um, we're spraying at 25 psi. That's normal. Uh, and we're literally going to. It'll be about a 50 50 mix. So I pour straight from the bottom. In we go. Any excess on the side, 
I wipe off just to save it dripping, which I did the other week on a model all over the wing. Um, generally keeps your airbrush a bit cleaner as well. So it's my Mr. Hobby's own thinners, and we're probably going to do there we go, about 50 50 mix. Again, we'll get into airbrushing a bit more in depth at a later date, but we're just going to cover this today. So when I tell me a stare is, give it a good stare, pop that to one side. What I've been doing lately is I've been nicking the colour cup lid off my iWater Neo and putting it on my Evolution just to save any paint spilling anywhere else at all. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're just going to give all these interior particles of RLM02. Like I said, when these are dried, we'll then go and pick out some other colours and what have you. But we're just going to completely paint the entire thing in RLM02. So on the spray booth. So once you paint in, check your flow. Seems okay to me. Possibly do a little bit more thinner. So I'm just chuck in a little bit more. Give it a stir again. It seems to be struggling there to get the paint out. That's fine. And what we'll do is we'll start with the actual cockpit section itself. What we're going to do is just all over, we're not trying to coat all in one go. We're just getting a light coating all around. The compressor comes on. Because if you try and cover it in one go, you'll end up with paint runs everywhere. So if you spin it round, you may have also noticed uh, the way I've got the cocktail stick on this, a little trick I to use quite a lot. I've literally super glued the flat end, which I cut off the cocktail stick, onto the bottom of this, sprayed a evacuator on it, and it's stuck firm, holds it really solid, and saves you having to manhandle anything, get fingerprints, paint everywhere, and I'll do this to a lot of small parts, just super glue them on, and it makes life so much more easy. So once you start getting a coat on, you can start coming back a bit thicker. You really start to get a good covering down. Obviously you don't need to do it along the back or there or there because they're not seen. Nor are the sides, but I still like to do them. Force of habit, unfortunately. So with these being primed, that gives it a good key for the paint. Um, you can get away with not priming it, I often do. Um, but for today I thought I'd give it a prime for you guys. So there you go, we can see now. I would say that is now covered. So what I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of sponge. I'll pop it in and show you that I use. So the reason for being on the cocktail stick is that. Once it's sprayed, you can shove it in there, put it to one side out of the way, job done. So again, before you start spraying again, check your flow. I'll run to the side parts now. So again, just a light coat, we're not trying to cover it in one go, and don't forget the top parts where your canopy is going to be, because they need to be the same colour. As the inside. Yes, you could brush paint it, but as you can see, in about 10 seconds, I've just painted that cleanly, evenly. And if I get a little blast of air, I guarantee in the space of a minute I'll be able to handle that. Because acrylics dry super fast. And obviously because you're airbrushing it, super smooth. So if the guys out there haven't got an airbrush or are afraid to use one, just get on and give it a go. So there we go, there's one half sprayed. On to the next one. Same again, just going all over it, give it a light dusting. 
I probably got over a quarter of the trigger back. Double action airbrush, so I'm down for air. I can maybe get the paint flow. I'll pull them back more or less as I go. You also need to remember because you got different um, parts that are sticking out there as well to put the angle on. So the airbrush gets right in there and paint everything. There we go. It's down, so now it's going to be thicker. There we go, job done. Back to this one quickly. Have a look, I'm just going to give it a quick. Quick blast around. So I keep knocking that camera with my arm. There we go. So quick. Easy, painted, simple. So I'll let those dry. Uh, we'll give them about 10-15 minutes. Uh, then I'll start picking out some of the detail. Um, and we'll get to weathering it. Okay, so we're at the spray booth. Uh, all the paint are now dry. As you can see, it's probably it's not even 10 minutes later. I can put my thumb in there, no problem whatsoever. Not 100% dry. Give it an hour, it'll be bone dry. Um, so what we've done, the cockpit, we've got the small clear section that forms the gun sight. I'll put it in, as you can see, just there at the top. So what we're going to do now, there's various colours that need picking out. The airfix instructions call for slightly different shades of grey on the seat base, uh, the instrument panel and what have you. And there's normally a decal for the instrument panel, if I remember right. There is for this one, but I can't see the decals at the minute. I don't know where I put them. Uh, somewhere, but never mind. Um, but I'm not. I'm going to paint it black and then dry brush the detail in. Um, so we're going to paint that now. Uh, so the copper instrument panel is black. The top of the control stick is black. Um, the base of the control stick is khaki, where I assume it would be like a gator. Uh, and that's basically all we're going to paint inside the actual copper itself. Um, there's a few parts on the side wall that still need to glue in place. I'll paint those first, then glue them. Um, basically because I forgot to put them in, if I'm honest. Um, so if I get those in, and there's a few other parts this side as well to go in. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you me hand painting every single little part. I'm just going to paint that instrument panel face and the bottom of that gun sight. So for that we're going to use Vallejo's Black, which is position number 169 or 7950. We'll mix that with a bit of their thinner. I'm using a Tamiya flat brush and one of my Series 7 Windsor Newtons. That one, it's a very fine detail brush. The camera will focus. There we go. Sorry about the pigeon outside as well. Lots of coloured doves, should I say. Um, we'll paint that copper uh, instrument panel black and then I'll do all the other bits and we'll come back uh, once that's done. So, the layer of paints. My favourite for hand painting, absolutely superb. Can be airbrushed as well. So we'll literally put a couple of drops in there. As you can see, just in the colour in the uh, palette. And then we'll try and mix a tiny little bit. There we go. Of their thinner in there too. So if I bring this over, so as you can see the thinner on the left in the white, so I'm just going to drag it across, mix it in. You can paint directly from the bottle, I just like to add a little bit of thinner. It seems to make them flow a lot better. Um, and what have you. So, most important thing, the brush is fully loaded there, is get it all off. And then use the tip of the brush. So there we go, I'll just pick that up. See if we can keep it in shot while I'm painting. So, with the flat brush. We're just going to cover all the instrument panel in black and then to get some detail out of this we'll dry brush it silver and that will pick up all the dials you'll see the effect in a bit it's a very easy quick simple way of 
painting dials and what have you. And obviously, it was at a bigger scale, like a 132 or what have you. I pay a bit more attention. Maybe put a bit clear in there. I mean, we could do it to this, but there's not that much detail in this cockpit, unfortunately. But it's adequate for what it is. I got the shakes today for some reason as well. Never good when you're hand painting. Too much coffee, probably. So we're just very gently, because we're using a flat brush, and it's quite a large flat brush. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Every time you get a dab of paint on there, just brush it off. Because it's such a shame to get everything perfect. Then just because you've got a little bit too much paint on the brush, it goes everywhere. So there we go, there's all the instrument panel done. Give that a quick swish out in there. You, you can see my rinsing pot there, all that's in there is um, concentrated screen wash, car screen wash. Very, very cheap brush cleaner. It's about £2.50 for two and a half litres from Tesco's. It's what I use. Works better than water. Nice and simple. So, yeah, the instructions call out for all the bottom of this clear part to be painted in black. So, we've gone to the finer pointed airbrush. Airbrush, sorry. Brush. To give it. Bit more precision. So there we go over the top. I'm just got that one little bit there. So you won't even see, to be honest, but I'm going to get it anyway. So there we go. There's an instrument panel done. Nice, quick, and simple. So again, because it's a bit thicker than being airbrushed, it takes a little bit longer to dry. But it's not like enamels where you're going to be waiting all day. Um, probably half an hour that will be dry to the touch and we'll be able to dry brush it so it's not really a problem at all I absolutely love Vallejo uh, model colour paints I've got I think I have got nearly the entire range of them just absolutely superb recommend it to anybody who hasn't used them before give them a whirl so there we go I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to move on to some of the other parts once all these parts have been hand painted we'll come back and we're going to have a bit of weathering right okay so we painted all the detail parts uh, as you see, we've done the instrument panel, top of the control lever, I've done the bottom of it in khaki. Um, that's all I'm going to do on the actual um, copy part itself, I'll zoom in so you can see. Um, because what will add most of the detail to this is the wash and the dry brushing. So that can go to one side. One side of the fuselage half, as you can see, a few ejector pin marks in there. They're not really an issue because essentially you're going to be looking down or like that into it and you can't really see them once they're in. So I'm not too fussed. Um, control levers on one side. If I can zoom in enough to show it, you might be able to see. I've done the top of one in red and one in yellow. It might not pick it up. But as you can see, ejector pin marks there, but no real issue. Same on the other side. Ejector pin marks again. Um, and we've got the, I think it's the oxygen regulator, if I remember right. I can't remember now. Um, this pocket bin type thing is also supposed to be in black, but to be honest, again, that is all you see of it, so I'm not going to spend time detailing something that can't be seen. And again, it's a dry brushing and the um, wash that will add a bit of detail to this. So that's that basically done. So these are all painted in Vallejo model colour acrylics, thinned with a little bit of their thinner. Um, paint brushes, um, I've got several different types, Tamiya, um, some Citadel. But the main ones I use are Winsor Newton Series 7. Uh, I've got the treble zero and the double zero. Um, if I zoom in again, they're not cheap brushes, I don't think they're too expensive to be fair though. Um, the finer of the two is this one here, um, and obviously the slightly less fine on the left. They're at £7 each, so what's that? Ooh, in the US exchange rate, hard to, 12 quid is it, $12 or something like that. Um, not the cheapest brushes, but I've had one of these now for nearly two years. Gets used all the time, clean it up and it just looks like new. Um, the other one's fairly new to me, but it's a much finer point. Great for painting figures. 
and really small parts like on the cockpit and if you look after them they last you a very very long time so that's the paintbrush I use for larger parts I've got a lot of the Tamiya um, paintbrushes I've had them very good uh, actually sell my paintbrushes there in Mr Hobby stand um, so mainly Tamiya and the Winsor Newton Series 7 are what I use try not to brush paint as well try and brush paint as little as possible airbrush everything I can but obviously there's still parts that need um, brush painting there's no way around that so next step for this um, we're going to give it a wash um, so we've got some Tamiya XF1 um, highly thin it's probably 80% thinner, 20% paint really really thin we're going to go to the spray booth and we're just going to give this a good coat um, it'll be left to stand up and we're going to literally over spray it not massively just enough so it all collects and all the recesses and gaps and it'll just give a highlight onto the fuselage itself. Um, once we've done that and that's dried, we'll come back, give it a quick dry brush over with some Tamiya X11. And that's basically the cockpit uh, finish, that's how I do them. Um, so we'll pop over the spray booth and we'll get this wash on. Right, okay guys, this is in the part one. Um, we covered the basic painting of the cockpit, um, from primer through to the um, airbrushing and the brush painting as well. Uh, I'll be back with part two um, almost immediately because it's ready to upload with this one, uh, which will cover the weathering. So we'll put the uh, thinned wash on it, dry brushing. We'll also get that into the fuselage and glued in place, ready in preparation for part three, which will be the gluing, filling, and the sand in the fuselage. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, this in part two. Uh, it's Paul from International Scale Modeler. Thanks for watching. Take care.